Hi everyone. Good morning. Good evening. This is Jitendra Jain, your speaker for the day. So today uh, this is going to be a on-demand uh, webinar uh, for CNCF Cloud Native Computing Foundation or community, which I'm going to record. And uh, today I'm going to talk on the developer experience platform called Backstage.io. Okay. So let me start sharing my screen. Okay, hope you can see my screen. Get started. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is on demand webinar with CNCF. Uh, uh, my name is Jitendra Jain. Once again, I'm a principal technology architect with Infosys, and uh, you know we have been working on CNCF projects from long, and Backstage.io is one of the uh, prominent uh, kind of open source uh, platform what we use. Okay, so this is a developer experience platform. So let me quickly move forward and talk about it. You can see my screen. Okay. So what is the agenda for today? Uh, let me talk about it. So we're going to cover the introduction about developer experience platform. We also call it DevX or DX or DevEx. It's kind of different name. You would have heard, right? You know, the UX or CX. Right, similar to UX or CX, now the DevX has become very popular. So we will see that. Then we'll talk about the key drivers. Uh, what are the key drivers uh, for developer experience platform? Then we'll uh, talk on the solution tenets. Then of course, actually we'll talk on uh, backstage.io. So we'll double click on the platform. We'll try to understand the uh, backstage.io uh, offerings, and then we'll go ahead with some architecture concept of uh, backstage. And finally, we'll see some references. Okay. With that uh, content, let me move forward. So, uh, as you can see, right, uh, I think this is a very specific uh, picture. So, it's all about, uh, you know, we all are suffering from workplace silo mentality. And that is a, that is a reason, you know, we are talking about uh, developer experience today. Okay. So, let me give a heads up what we are talking about and if you look at we are not alone it's very common so as you can see this picture let me uh start the picture. okay so you can see the work silo mentality this is a mentality i was referring to basically you can see uh various folks are working in various uh, uh groups but they don't have intercommunication you can see the red lines among uh, all of them so they're not talking to each other rather they're not sharing the information with each other right that's a problem right that is where, where the Silo mentality started uh, taking place in workplaces. Okay. And I think mind, mindset, I talked about it, right? It's typically company culture. And the challenge is people, right? They are building a lot of good things. They are, uh, you know, innovating stuff. They are creating a lot of APIs, a lot of stuff, a lot of templates, a lot of uh, utilities which can really improve uh, their productivity in the same organization. If others can use, others can start uh, consuming that, but that is not the option because they're not sharing information, right? That's a problem. That is the silo mentality is all about, right? So they don't, they won't share resources and information. Hence the information will be kind of, uh, will not be public within their organization. It will be private to their uh, unit or their group or their project, right? Other, other guy, right? will also build a similar information. So they will st start building it from the scratch, which uh, introduce the duplicacy, right? So now there's a challenge. We you get rid of the silo in workplace? That's another uh, uh, kind of concern. So if we have a unified vision, uh, definitely that could be one of the direction. If we can build an information hub that everyone can go ahead and consume the information, if we can work, train, and grow together, if we can communicate more often, I think which is not the case over here, you see the red, red lines over here. Of course, uh, if we can get rid of this work this friction, right, which is a major challenge. If we can do that, definitely, uh, you know, work close, workplace silo mentality can be, you know, uh, kind of overcome or I can, I can say we can uh, reduce that or finish it, right? How to achieve all these uh, stuff? The answer is developer experience platform. Yes, you heard it right. Developer experience platform, if we have the platform, most of the stuff will, will be taken care, okay? Let me move forward with this uh, assumption. Okay, now I think we talked about problem statement, right? I think again, now 
uh, if you want to double click on problem statement with workplace uh, silo mentality, what are the challenges? Of course, it start with of collaboration and transition. Typically lower down your productivity, uh, of, of course, right? And down the line, you see, uh, of course, the problem is not only this, right? Problem is too many, right? So there are complex infrastructure and ecosystem, you know, because of uh, non standardization, typically, you know, work on various, uh, you know, duplicate uh, stuff and, you know, a duplicate effort I was talking about, right? Where you are building APIs, component, and, you know, duplicate effort is there and other than, you know, uh, reuse, right? That's, that reuse is not promoted. Your productivity will be lower. So then uh, time to market will be more, right? You will take more time to deliver a product. Finally, uh, you know, there is no unified single interface. That's a common problem, right? Where I can really, from multiple people from a SDLC perspective, uh, from a team perspective, you know, dev team, QA team, testing team, security team, uh, product engineer, product manager, right? Design team, UX team can all go to one place and, you know, verify the information and can uh, go there. That is not available. That increases developer frustration, right? Of course, because of the reluctance nature to share the information. And finally, it will be a full experience for developers, right? So we are all, we are, we are talking about developer experience, right? So uh, the painful developer experience is the reality today. Okay. And that's where we are talking about developer experience platform. Okay. Let me move forward with this vision. Uh, let me double click on developer experience. I think so as I talked about it, you can call it DevX or DX or DevX. Various names are available. And uh, how to define it? How easily you can uh, come implement your task, right? Without uh, too many uh, back and forth, right? That's how the developer experience will be defined. Okay. And you can see, uh, you know, it's a new persona being constructed in your organization. And finally, uh, you know, for a developer, right? How do you optimize your workflow, your processes, your development processes, your best practices, your tooling, right? If, if you can uh, achieve that, if you can optimize that, definitely you will have a good experience. So I think that's how I'm thinking like this, or I'm visualizing it like this. Good developer experience is equal to dev happiness, of higher productivity. So the developer experience will be good. Finally, the productivity will be higher, right? That's what we're looking for. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, right, UX is all about uh, caring about users, right? So, you know, so user, user, UX is user experience. Similar to user experience, DX is all about developer experience, right? So now, nowadays the term is coined DX. It's all about developer experience, right? If you see the developer journey, I just put together a high level journey over here, starting from ideation, planning, design, setup, coding, building, testing, deployment, monitoring, observability, pleasing, uh, go live, and finally customer feedback, right? The loop. This is all about the SDLC, right? The developer journey. What if if I can really make this journey smoother and uh, you know have more simple? I think that is the idea behind uh, you know the developer experience platform. With that, let me move forward. So the question may be: What are the drivers, business drivers for developer experience platform? Why the uh, why the heck I'm talking about it? What are what are the requirement? I think we talked about it. Now you got a bit sense of it, but you see. There are various uh, drivers, so I would like to highlight some of the drivers over here. It's gonna definitely fix silos experiences as, as we talked about it. It's gonna, uh, you know, uh, spread the culture of uh, sharing the knowledge within the organization. It will bring standardization of technology and tool, right? With defined owner, it will improve your efficiency, improve your productivity, and of course, self service automation, and of course, other features like scalability and all that, right? So, those are the Major drivers, uh, I would say, uh, to go ahead for developer experience platform. That's how you can see that we are moving ahead. Okay. With that intent, let me move forward. Uh, I'll talk. I'll talk about some of the top platform in industry, right? So, if you look at this slide, uh, I am trying to uh, put uh, together some of the uh, players: Ops level, uh, Backstage, Compass, Clutch, Configurate, Cortex are the major players in industry. I mean, I mean, they are the player who is providing. Developer experience platform. Okay. Some are open source, some are course product, licensing product, right? Some are kind of a utility or some are only part of a, their uh, platform. So, example, Ops level is uh, one of the popular platform, is a SaaS platform. Okay. Uh, it handles the developer uh, portal and all this thing. Uh, but the only challenge is it comes with uh, licensing cost. So, it's not open source. You have to tie up with vendor, uh, pay a, a decent licensing fee, the, uh, the licensing cost of it, and then 
need to onboard the uh, ops level team for uh, kind of you know uh, making it happen right so that that's a problem uh, compass if you look at it's part of artisan ecosystem so if you are already using artisan compass will give you some some uh, uh, leverage on uh, same lines okay but not very intuitive uh, or it's not a complete platform maybe a part of uh, ecosystem which is again open source platform uh, designed for simplicity but again the focus is very minimal figure eight is again a platform uh, right but again focus is on very specific cataloging and self service actions and score cards right not everything x is again a platform developer platform which is again on uh, high visibility softwares and all that but uh, challenge is not very uh, evolved right uh, over the years now this is the guy backstage right this is this is the guy and I, you can see we have short at this platform for various implementations right with our customers so the reason is back it is open source platform for building developer portals it it gives you a, a tremendous amount of uh, flexibility and customization ability and i think all you all know it it is from spotify we all know spotify engineering the music company right so backstage uh, was part of uh, spotify earlier and they donated it to uh, open source community uh, called cncf cloud native computing foundation or community and now you know it's part of uh, cncf project the open source project okay okay hope so now uh, shortlisted platform is backstage.io let me move forward now i'll quickly talk on the backstage.io uh, you know platform okay it's time to double click let's jump into okay so backstage as we all know it's open source platform uh, you can see the service catalog i mean one of the major service catalog of backstage and then uh, you know everything is uh, via definition so you can see this these are the kind of a yaml configuration files a, a snapshot of that we'll we'll see more on that okay and uh, uh, integrate tooling web plugins. So this is another area where Backstage is leading. There's 100 plus open source plugin available in Marketplace, Backstage Marketplace, which you can integrate based on your business need, right? So it's a uh, kind of a part of it. Okay, so if you want to define, you know, again, this, read this point is very important. It unifies an organization's tooling, services, app, data, and documents in a single consistent UI allow developers to create manage and explore software right so that's the power of it right you can typically manage everything in your organization and of course the developers can even build on top of it okay so with that uh, initial description let me move forward okay so some double clicking on backstage.io what is it uh, we all know i mean it's a developer experience platform and uh, it is also known as one front end for an entire infrastructure to build ecosystem right so whatever you have in your uh, organization uh, in your enterprise why don't you build one front end uh, in form of backstage and uh, put all these infrastructure uh, tooling and uh, software cataloging and other stuff uh, you know within the front end so that you know you can standardize your stuff and you can build one common catalog okay uh, as i talked out, out about it unifies your tooling services documentation and it creates a streamlined development environment from end to end and that's a part of it uh, we are calling it soft, centralized software catalog. That is where uh, it really uh, starts with. And how do you how do you think that it's managed? Right, it's manage everything based on metadata. So metadata is always on tap, right, uh, uh, within backstage, right. So that is the power of it. Uh, be it deployment pipelines, data pipelines, uh, you know, your Kafka pipe pipelines for streaming, or pull requests, everything. You know, finally, it's all metadata driven. So if you have if you know about metadata, which is data about data. Finally, you can always uh, put your stuff under one place. Okay. As I talked about, it's not only about services, libraries, websites, portals, machine learning models, everything is, uh, you know, uh, can be managed within backstage uh, catalog or within backstage uh, portal, right? So that's where it typically owns everything. Okay. And, uh, you know, discoverability and accountability is another uh, part of it. So, you know, uh it, it automatically discovers your dependency that's a good part of it right no need to go ahead manually uh put everything on backstage to define a pattern and uh, backstage automatically discover your available services apis everything based on a specific configuration pattern right so that's a part of it there's a youtube video link over here is you can uh, have it later okay. we'll talk on how discoverability and accountability is gonna help Okay, with that uh, uh, definition, let's move forward. 
now you would be assuming hey what are the components right uh, what what about this backstage so the, down the line backstage uh, you know consists of four core components i would say you can see on the screen software catalog software templates the docs and the plugins right if you know these four components you know the backstage end to end why because majorly it talks about catalog so catalog is all about managing all your software microservices libraries data pipelines portals everything so we are calling this catalog as a service right so everything is managed under this one is one other thing very interesting is template right so for quickly spinning up your new projects and standardizing your tooling uh, backset provides templates so it provides various templates templates for your apis microservices rest services uh, or or your UI portals, let's say for React components or Angular components, right? So you can build various templates, your pipelines, your Terraform scripts, right? Uh, your infrastructure as code pipelines, uh, your DevOps pipeline if you're building via Bamboo or Jenkins or Ansible, right? Various tools. It typically gives you templates, right? And good part is once template is defined, everyone need to follow the template, right? So that gives standardization, that promotes the standardization in your organization, which is generally not available in a smaller organization. They struggle, right? Every Tom Deganeri comes and start uh, building some component without standardizing or with, without checking what is available, what is the process, what is the standard in the company called X or Y, and that is where they start losing the overall, uh, you know, traction. Okay, so that is where Backstage is going to be powerful. Docs, wherever you are managing your technical documentation, Backstage provides out of the box feature which you can use for managing your technical documentation. It is all about uh, managing your your uh, you know SOPs, your uh, you know uh, normal instructions, your API documentations, your portal documentations, your release notes, everything, right? Whatever you're manage, managing under a, a document portal can be managed under Tech Docs very easily. Okay, plugin I, as I talked about, right? Finally, it's all about plugin. Finally, uh, whatever backstage we are doing, it's typically based on plugin, right? So every backstage application or a feature is available as a plugin. That's most important part of it. I think just a, just a uh, let me see. Okay, recording is in progress. Just uh, you want to verify it. Okay. If you look at now, uh, if you look at the plugins, I was talking about plugin, right? So plugin is another part of it, what I was referring to. Because every backstage application is a uh, is a available in plugin, okay, and you can use those plugin. Hundred plus plugin is what is already available. So I will talk more on that plugin. Let me move forward with this. Okay. So I think quickly I thought let me talk about the demo of backstage. Uh, you know because you would be like, hey, what is backstage? How do you how it look like? So you can see this demo. Now, there's a demo site for quick reference. Uh, the URL is. HTTPS demo dot backstage dot io. I can quickly let me let me show you if I can show. Uh, not. Yeah, if I okay. So now I'm I'm trying to yeah. This is a let me open the backstage demo site. If you can see my screen, guys, demo dot backstage dot io. We go. It it spins up a software catalog for you. You can always use that. You can see this demo site. So let me tell you. You all can open it now or whenever you are. Uh, you know, uh, kind of. Uh, enjoying this video you will be able to see uh, how it look like and you can see it uh, manages all the components there's a catalog and uh, if you look at you can click on any component double click you can go to uh, you know the provides various information about the component the service component look up example provides overview source code legal documentation ownership life cycle tax here the java component so it will be easy for uh, in a long run to search by various uh, stakeholders uh, you can see the you know the uh, the east graphical visualization where it's talking about the various structure uh, based on who is managing what you can always drill down uh, and you can see these are the plugins right so now ci cd is one of the plugin which will configure which jenkins you will see all jenkins pipeline status for this component dependencies you can see over here docs you can see over here to do so this is just an example guys this is an example how a backstage look like there's a backstage dashboard i would say but yeah this is a dashboard you click on home this is a dashboard down the line it, it, it does a lot of stuff for you for example if you can see it manages everything developers can uh, you know based on tags they can edit info 
directly go to the specific uh, you know source code the repository for making the changes let's say i would like to make changes to uh, this api cast api okay. i can directly go to edit it will take me to the podcast api uh, if i have a github credentials available login you see uh, you know technically okay it takes me to the uh, place right so you are it takes me to the api configuration okay so idea is quickly i can make changes over here and uh, submit changes if it is fine uh, community can approve you can go ahead and quickly you know uh, see your changes over here okay so this is in, in real world right if uh, you are implementing for your organization your api will be part of it, this and you guys can ma you know manage your api from here no need to go to in the portal okay because it typically manage everything if you look at api uh, let me show you this api service see api tab over here under api you will be able to find uh, every single information about api the provided api is details the child api is the consumed api and the other information about api okay and uh, this is about catalog if you go to api tab okay so home is fine catalog is i talked about it catalog is same catalog i was talking to and if you go to api it will only list down the api right so if there are only api in your organization these are the api let me say it's a quick uh, graphql api you can see the relation of api nicely manage about is consuming the api you can see that and you can see the definition okay, that's a very good part of it you see the definition of api so your definitely your api definition will be available and you can modify it from here even regular uh, api can be integrated over the, over here you can see there you can modify the api update run the api test the api from here only okay that's the power of uh, backstage Many documentation talked about it you can manage the documentation i think this is a tech doc i thought that you were demo tech doc this is a tech doc how it look like see very nice documentation uh, managed by uh, the mk docs uh, is a utility what we use for here you know you can quickly modify the component and change it okay this is for you can quickly modify you know i, I can uh to modify it you can say over here you see docs right you can always go ahead it will take you to the specific location and then you can modify it from there okay let's say there's a cncf is the owner for this backstage you go to this place the source code available you see source code source code it will take you to source code yeah here we go see directly you move to the uh, source code so there's a power you can quickly uh go to the api folder okay now uh some is it so, you know i was talking about template you can create templates and components so this is a good one once you configure you will see uh, various templates are available you can add templates from here i think i showed you some templates uh you can further explore about the backstage ecosystem so it has domains group tool why because you can define your own domains right so think about it that you are implementing backstage in your organization let's say insurance industry or a finance industry or a retail industry any of the company right you have, you would have your own domains your own group line of business i would say and then, and then under of course each group you have tools right these are the tools let's say you have these groups if you want to see only the information about that team b right i'll click on team b and i'll be able to see what team b is doing see team b so team b is a specific uh, team that a group called uh, let's say a this is the information and you see this team owns one website one service one component i can see what service you're talking about on the service we go podcast api is owned by this right so that's how you can drill down it will give you an insight about your entire uh, landscape and services and uh, what kind of stuff is available i talked about it but let me show you uh, on the online over here see api component domain group location this sort everything everything can be managed mostly you can search you know services based on so you need services website libraries sdks everything can be managed here mostly everything okay because there's a plugin available and you can see based on owner c owners let's say cncf is owner you see cncf then you will see cncf owner based stuff okay so this is the cncf component only one component okay you can filter down this and then on the line you can always see uh, based on the uh, you know uh, life cycle if the api or any component is in production or experimental phase based on tags you can say hey show me on the only the java base uh, apis here we go these are the java base api because tags are available over here if you want to see everything you know so that way you'll be able to see uh, everything right based on your preferences of course based on the these are some filter criteria 
you can always uh, turn on your search. Okay. Uh, tech radar is another feature, guys. Uh, let me thought. Uh, let me uh, talk about it. This is about quite the uh, you know uh, the current uh, landscape of your technical depth. Where are you? What do you want to adopt? Uh, tail, hold, buy, sell. You know the buy sell strategy. So it gives you a good view. It's another feature. Plus insights, very interesting feature. I am amazed to see the feature in backstage. It typically gives you a, a kind of a, a cost insights view for your organization about your cloud. Uh, Spendings so this is very popular. I think very uh, important topic for uh, for CTOs and CTO minus one level guys. CXO, right? They want to understand what we are spending, how much we're spending. You see, along with action item, what I have for me. Okay, so I can see the you know see the growth is uh, going down or up. You can see everything, and finally, it 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 will show me the cloud cost based on uh, breakdown map, based on project, product, right? Whatever I have defined. At two for six months or or twelve twelve months or the quarter wise. So you know, this is gonna give you a good amount of insight, right? So that's available and that's a dashboard. So you what you do whatever services you are using in your uh, in your uh, organization from hyperscalers like Azure, uh, GCP or AWS. Why don't you configure this and see everything over here, right? So that's gonna give you a good uh, insights about the uh, overall usage. Okay. And of course, GraphQL is another supported uh, for you know for. Now, what is the graph specific databases? You can see the back end. You can just check the you know login and you know it will move you to the specific location. Okay. So with that, I think uh, let me move back to the uh, presentation, guys. Hope you are good with the uh, with the demo. And uh, quickly, uh, you know, I talked about the yeah. So this is the guys the, as I talked about backstage is a open source community project. So you can see this is a, a source code available. You're free to make the you know take the source code, build it, customize it, and you can always free to contribute to open source community uh, backstage. And there is a community called Discourse uh, which supports backstage for changes uh, because you know now it's not uh, officially part of uh, Spotify, it's part of CNCF, so and they are going to manage it. You can see uh, this uh, backstage was uh, now part of CNCF, so this is a CNCF website. Uh, you all can see that and. Uh, yeah, you can see. Let me see if I can find uh, backstage here. Okay. Okay, I think it will be directly available over here like this. Yeah. You can see various information. You can see number of pro. Yeah, backstage is here. You can see right. I just it just went away. So backstage was one of the project. There are other projects. So we are only talking about backstage. This on demand webinar. Okay. Okay. Let me move forward, guys, quickly, and let me now again go back to the presentation. Uh, okay, I was here. If you remember, right? So now you are familiar with the demo site. Uh, you can can see, and you now know you understood backstage a bit. Great for that. So yeah, I think thumbs up for that. I would say now let's move ahead. So I was talking about component, right? So see this slide. You can create templates, components. And create documentation template, uh, React template, or uh, microservice template for Spring Boot services, DRP services, uh, you know, pull request template. So you, what you do, you define your templates in the backstage, and uh, ensure that uh, in all line of business, your organization uh, developers are following this template, right? So that way, your entire uh, assets, your development, your source code will follow the standard guidelines, right? And make uh, it, it will be available under one umbrella, right? So you will the problem of standardization, right? That's always a problem will be resolved. Okay. Let me move forward. Uh, benefit, I think I'll not spend time on that. I think you all know benefit is at all level. Of course, for developers, it's a major benefit. But platform engineers can build on top of uh, you know plugins and uh, take benefits. Using manager can of course take benefit based on I talked about right cost insights. The various end to end ecosystem, they can verify it, they can uh, quickly review the dashboard and see uh, how the overall assets are there about the tech depth management. There are lots of stuff to, you know, overall for everyone, it's gonna give a consistent experience, right? Okay. Some essentials, uh, some basic essential information about backstage. Now you all know uh, it was created uh, by Spotify in uh, 2016, but now hosted to CNCF, uh, Cloud Radio Computing Foundation or community. As an incubation level project, okay, so it's part of CNCF now. It has hundred plus open source plugin available. That's the power of it. It relies on npm packages for, of course, uh, building and distribution. 
And of course, this is some older statistics, but it's going to help you. It's, it's really very popular. You can see number of projects, folks, PR contribution and discord members. Discord is open source community. If you have any issues, you join discord community, backstage community, ask for any uh, feedback or issues or new features or plugin. They are going to help. Okay. People are working down the line for, you know, creating new stuff. Okay. With that, let me talk about adoption. So quickly. It is a 2022 bit older information, but you see adoption has increased as anything. And I think I can see American Airlines or Expedia or, you know, Splunk or Siemens or Twilio, VMware. Most of the folks are using it in one of the uh, another, another format because it's going to give the complete information. This uh, URL is uh, where you can go and check the latest information on this. Okay. Uh, coming to the technology platform for technology folks, right? So people would be wondered, hey, what is the technology behind Backstage, the open source platform? So overall, let me give you an idea. So React, Node, JavaScript are the front end technology which uh, majorly used or heavily used in uh, Backstage UI. Okay. SQLite is the memory database for by default uh, users. Docs is the overall core uh, component for you know uh, containerization. So they are completely available as a the Docker image, you know, the backstage, you can even deploy the backstage source code as a Docker image and uh, can deploy on any cloud, okay, or on prem wherever you want to based on your requirement. Postgres is a preferred uh, database, uh, what they're using for production purposes, and monolog repositories and yard are the tool for building. If you look at very uh, customized text tag based on uh, our experiences, if you really want to build uh, or deploy uh, backstage uh, on AWS, then how, what are the, what is the tech stack? You can see React, uh, okay, let me open this. Yeah, okay. React node material UI is required if you really want to create customized component, uh, and then this is done. And if you look at this AWS services, ECR, ECS, EKS, that is what, uh, uh, you know, if you, are, if you are building on AWS, okay? So that's where it's being used. I'll, I'll show you one case study and use case on this as well. Okay, typical architecture diagram. SQLite is in memory database, Postgres is a product database. You can use one. Uh, Postgres preferred any day because of the nature and the scale. Okay. So this is a text tag. I hope uh, if you are comfortable with this, you can quickly move forward. Okay. So now let's talk about a very basic logical architecture, how it looks like. So, as we I talked about, right? It's a single page application. So uh, you know, when if somebody is asking backstage, so I would say backstage is typically a uh, single page application UI platform built on top of React, Node, TypeScript. And of course, with the microservices, uh, you know, architecture in mind. Okay, of course, with third party APIs and all that, okay. So if you look at over here, this is a example for, a, you know, uh, let's say user is talking to a backstage UI, the portal I talked about, I showed you, uh, the demo.backstage.io. Uh, there are plugins based on plugin. It will uh, talk to the various backend. Backend will talk to DB. And if there is a external service, external plugin available, of course uh, you you'll go via proxy, right? So that uh, internal to external communication can become more secure, more uh, easy. So overall, if you look at the logical architecture, the core UI, is the first part of it, backend services, the second part of it, and database third part of it. Right? So very easy, basic, uh, you know, typical. A three tier architecture. Okay. So UI wrapped around a set of pins, it provides some core components, and you can build on top of it. It's a core UI. Again, in backend services, I'm talking about this part is each plugin is client side application, which mounts itself on the UI, right? It's a very, very valid point. Pins are written in TypeScript, okay, or JavaScript. Uh, each live in their own direct in backstage pages, right? So whatever plugin you create or you use, it will be available under backstage such plugin. Don't worry, I'll show you the uh, the plugin structure, the source code structure, that the directory structure of backstage uh, app, the DBs, and database uh, backend, and it's typically built on uh, Next library. Next is a SQL query builder library. It typically builds like a microservice uh, backend based on entity, right? So, so it's typically uh, you know a logical separation. So database plus plugin. So you know you can see uh, every plugin has a single database, or I would say a single data source, right? So that it gives an uh, independent the micro front end uh, microservice kind of view in a cloud native world, right? See, this gives a great isolation and, uh, you know, for migration, very easy acceptation. SQLite is a in-memory database. 
as I talked about, Gray is preferred for production. Okay, with that, let's move forward. So, if guys, if you are interested in how to create a backstage app, uh, by now you have figured out, but very easy. It's a mono app uh, set up with Larna. Larna is a build tool. Don't worry about it. You have to write some statement. You don't want to, uh, you know, down the line, Larna and everything will be uh, spun up for you. What do you need for backstage app? To create an app, you need Node.js, NPM, Yarn, and Larna installed. So, typically, once you you know have node and npm everything this will be installed based on as and when required because it all comes under uh, wood package, right okay of course uh, if you want to build the uh, your use the postgre then postgre should be available on your machine of course and one more important thing is docker remember that because docker uh, they use for documentation and you know putting the various uh, docs so docker is also a requirement tech docs is a feature which typically uh, build on top of docker Okay, so now with that, uh, how do you create an app in backstage? Uh, so, very easy command npx backstage slash create app created. This is the command what they follow to create it. You can always create it. When you run this command on uh, or your CLI, it will create a backstage app inside the current folder, okay, app folder. Then, of course, generate all the source code, everything under this. And uh, what it generates? So, it generates stuff like this app. That is the YAML file uh, for a app configuration, plug info file for your box, and the JSON file and packages and app and backend. So remember that this conf app config file is very important. This is where you put main configuration of your application. Plug info is again very important because that provides or that's where you provide the information of catalog. Catalog means the services, the APIs, the tools, the, the ML models, whatever you are. Uh, storing in backstage that becomes a part of catalog. Remember, so that that information, that source you need to provide under catalog info YAML. Okay. Backstage.json is dependency, we all know. Remember under packages, app and backend. So app is a front end package. Okay, so package app is a front end package, holds the front end, UI part of your backstage app, and package, package uh, slash backend will provide the backstage part of it, the backend part of it, where you find APIs and all that. Okay. So once you create the app, structure will be available based on this. Run the app using uh, go to my CD my uh, backstage app yarn dev. Yarn dev command is gonna start the application uh, on your uh, app machine, and uh, you know you open uh, localhost 3000. You'll see your app and up and running, right? So once you run this, finally what you're gonna see, you're gonna see the you know the same view what what I showed in the demo app, right? Uh, again, uh, demo dot backstage dot io. You can run it again and see how it looks like. Okay. And then you start customizing this application based on your need. You start adding plugins and all that. Okay. Okay. So now I was talking to plugin, right? So you may have like question about, hey, how do you? What about the plugin, right? So again, if there are already a, a plugin available in the marketplace directly, you can integrate it. It's very easy. But if you want to create custom plugin, that 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 is a requirement at some some of the places, right? Some of the enterprises where they want to create some different plugin which is not available in marketplace out of hundred, right? So of course, uh, someone down the line in Discord community, you can check if plugin is available. If at all you want to build a plugin, you can build it. Uh, in development is it takes TypeScript, the language, as you all know, and it's very easy. Typically, Material UI you should know. I mean, Material UI or backs or or Bootstrap kind of UI visiting library is required because you know whatever component you need in UI, right? That should be part of any library. So uh, backstage promotes the material UI, but you are free to choose any other library. Okay. Of course, uh, you know, overall information about the stuff. So you see, when you create a new plugin, it's just a you know create plugin plugin command is available, very easy command. It's available on backstage. Create a plugin documentation part of it. You will see the new plugin will create like this. You can see the plugin over here. You can see uh, there is a component. Of course, the new plugin component. Let's say name is example component. Okay, so. It has a standard TypeScript uh, React stuff, right? It has a specification, test specification, SX file, configuration file, and in.ts file for your plugin, routes, routes .ts for defining the routes, and of course, set, you know, your package.json for dependency. And you can see uh, over here uh, a typical plugin, right? A, a, kind of a, a standard stuff where you create a plugin, like this export cons plugin, if you know the React. Uh, you are, you understand what I'm talking about, the standard stuff, and then you know that's how you export in uh, you know using provide. Okay, so this is a file. This is an example of a 
plugin.ts file for your reference. Once you create a plugin, you will get to know more on that. We move forward. So plugin is again of three type guys, just uh, kind of I thought, let me give you more information about it. Standalone plugin, service backend plugin, and third party plugin. Third -party back plugin. Uh, standalone plugin is standard, right? It only has UI, there's nothing to do with backend, right? So, you know, you, you have a UI hard-coded data for your UI, everything is uh, in, within the browser, right? So that's a standard plugin, standalone plugin, but majorly we use second and third category. Service backend plugin is where your service backend plugin is something where you know uh, a API request is being made to a service for any front end, right? So, for example, Lighthouse plugin. You know, like Lighthouse is a Google uh, library, uh, right, for analytics and uh, auditing and all that. So, if you can see this, then Lighthouse audit service plugin uh, service is required. Right? So, for uh, service backend plugin, there is a service required. So, you need to call this service. This service is available on Google Lighthouse library, right? The service is what you need to call because you are calling or you are calling a, a, a backend service which is available right so you have to have this service in your uh, in your you know in your repository uh, reference to the repository okay so that this uh, service will retrieve the list of backend entities and all that okay but third party backend plugin are again are same service backend plugin the only difference is you know because uh, you know the difference is the service which backs the plugin is hosted outside the ecosystem so in this case service will not be part of the entire organization like for example you are working for org a this uh, service will be outside the you know org a. you have to uh, uh, call it via cdn repository or or cloud on prem or you know uh, or or via apis okay you have to, that's where you know becomes third party backend plugin Plus everything is fine for example circle ci is an example circle ci is a plugin available for you know uh, for uh, ci cd so that's a third party company that's third party uh, utility okay so you go to circle ci site and find the detail and then but if you are using circle ci again which is available in backstage market don't worry they will give you every information about how to integrate it okay? but that all becomes so third party backend plugin so in your case mostly you will be dealing with second and third i would say third is major because the customization right where you are going to integrate various uh, uh, you know sdlc phases like tooling about DevSecOps, DevOps, security, code scans, uh, right? You know, build tools, testing tools, right? All these things, APIs, uh, you know, uh, AI tools, all these things, uh, or analytics tool, observability tools, are, all are third party. So this will become more prominent for you. Let me move forward quickly. I think we are moving towards end, guys. Hope you are getting some idea about backstage now. You know, if you remember, I talked about uh, you know one of uh, the backstage. Uh, example about deployment so this is an example of how to deploy backstage with aws fargate okay and uh, you know typically fargate and ecr so this is an example uh, for aws but you can deploy backstage uh, you know images or a source code on Kubernetes or on docker images directly can be deployed on containers or huruku huruku you know is a platform for sales so there are options available okay even you can deploy on any other cloud okay but AWS is preferred uh, one for me at least, hence I am showing the AWS space implementation. Okay. See, uh, if you remember, I talked about Docker images. So first you build the Docker image, you see Docker image build minus have packages, uh, Docker file minus tag, uh, high five and tag backstage. Uh, you refer to a Docker file and that's how it's gonna build the Docker image for you. Once the Docker image is built, you see the Docker image is available here, you right? Now, if the Docker image is here, you can see this is a AWS uh, deployed uh, infrastructure. You can see this is the infrastructure. Pipeline. Assume, a, 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 assume a Jenkins pipeline or a Bamboo pipeline or Ansible pipeline under this, right? So the pipeline will trigger, application pipeline will run. It will create the Docker build like this with this command. Once the Docker build is available, uh, you know what you do? You push the Docker image, Docker build, the repository, the ECR repository. This is AWS CCR guys, Elastic uh, Cloud uh, Container Registry uh, from AWS. It right? put on a Elastic Container Registry repository. From there, it will be a ECS cluster, okay? a Fargate ECS cluster. ECS cluster is an Elastic Compute Service, right? It's going to be one of the serverless option available uh, in AWS, right? Uh, for uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, orchestrating your uh, jobs and all that. This Fargate cluster is going to spun a job. 
and execute the uh, image, right? Whatever uh, you uh, shared or you copied on ECR repository via this build, okay? Now over here it got executed and you see the execution and it will deploy on the environment. You see the test environment, test URL and the prod environment, prod URL, right? You can see ALB, the load balancer, uh, staging task where it's gonna deploy your image, start executing your clusters that you can start using it. This is Aurora PG cluster for, for backend, right? So it's a database uh, if you're using Postgre, the Postgre cluster. And these are domains and, you know, various uh, certifications, right? certificates and metrics. Okay. So hope you are uh, 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 happy with this uh, AWS option. However, there are multiple options as I talked about. You can choose uh, whatever you like. Uh, another architecture I thought, let me tell you reference architecture uh, again on AWS, how it look like. Maybe a double clicking on overall how a, a backstage uh, Docker uh, image is deployed on AWS and uh, deployed on uh, kind of a, on a cloud with various components. So you can see example is again there, backstage is here, front end application, remember that, has its own database, RDS, let's say if you're using uh, Amazon RDS, and uh, it, you, you can see it is talking to uh, the platform services and the data sources, okay. And if, if I start from the beginning, you see the incoming traffic, 53, from there it will come to a platform gateway, could be AWS API gateway, if you are using this. From there it will hit the uh, backstage application, the URL, what you deployed, it's in form of Docker image. From there it will, you know, backstage itself is going to talk to services, with via APIs, uh, you know, of course, every API or every portal has its own database. Same data service, they all have their own agri databases, the uh, RDS. And of course, let's say you uh, you want to in integrate with various data sources and you want to show uh, this plugin, these features on your backstage UI. You know, if you remember, I showed you on, uh, when I showed you demo, right, you double click on dashboard, where you see CI, CD, and, uh, you know, uh, APIs, right? So that is what it's, right? So you can integrate Swagger, Sonar, Quest Lock, Quotify, Kibana, AppDynamics, Jenkins, Bitbucket. These are very few names I talked about. There are 100 plus such uh, components or softwares or tools are available which we can deploy on backstage as a plugin. You can use it. Okay. This is a kind of, you know, DR architecture. You can see the US East one, primary and secondary for uh, disaster recovery purposes. Same architecture over here. So this is a deployment package. Oh, this, is, this will give you a high level view as to how to deploy a backstage. Okay. Okay. Now uh, I'm I'm kind of closing it uh, almost uh, last uh, five seven minutes guys five to seven minutes. The package architecture I thought I mean uh, it's very uh, internal internal sort of level details of backstage. If you want to understand how backstage is actually uh, you know using its library right. So I mean again if you look at the backstage uh, uh, GitHub project the source code. If you want to explore it uh, one level down if you're interested right. If you want to see, you see the legend over here. If you want to see the front end packages in blue color, isomorphic packages, you know, back end packages, and CLI packages, right? So, this is how it looks like. So, you know, if you remember, we talked about the app and back end, right? So, if we see the app, let's say there's a backstage app. Every backstage app has a front end app core engine library with, under which it has core libraries with core app, API, and default. It has back end. You can see back end, there's a back end. Under back end, it has a case back end plugin. Backend libraries, overall there are shared libraries, common tooling is here. And of course, the plugin library if you are integrating via plugin, An external play library if you are integrating via external plugin, right? So I talked about external plugin, internal plugin, right? External plugin is all about, I gave example about the circle CI of it. So this is a internal architecture, okay? You can always see everything as a unique ID and you know, modules and all that. This is how it built. So this is, this is, and this is a, Compatibility with all these, uh, you know, packages. Okay, so there's a package level architecture. If somebody wants to go one level down, okay. So with that, I think uh, I'm good. Uh, these are the references for you. You guys can uh, refer it later. And uh, so by now, I think uh, uh, I think I'm concluding my uh, on-demand uh, webinar session over here, guys. Hope you learned uh, something about the backstage, the developer experience platform, right? and more about it. So I would uh, take your leave now. And overall, uh, what did we cover today is, uh, in this webinar, we covered the developer experience platform, the uh, workplace silo mentality, and then of course, various platform, 
and why do we want to have developer experience platform and of course why backstage.io as one of the cncf popular project why it's taking traction adopters and how do you implement this and uh, i would say sooner or later right all organization will go ahead for developer experience platform they have to build a software catalog because you can't have your your services your tooling right your api is information in excel sheet or in emails or in different portals right you can't maintain 10 different portals one for api let's say swagger one for your uh, various uh, portals needs one for your templating right one for your documentation it's very tough to manage and maintain because down the line the cost will increase and the effort will increase right so backstage.io being an open source platform is one of the fantastic uh, effort in in reducing your uh, uh, pains and you know reducing your or improving your improving your productivity ideas okay so hope uh, you like this session uh, it will be available on um, uh, cncf uh, on demand webinar section you can have it later okay thank you so much i'll take your leave thank you